We primarily take care of orphans and vulnerable children, especially of the HIV AIDS related. For a project like this, really, it needs to be structured, it needs to add value to the lives of the children. So my primary function is to make sure that all the programs that uh, we are involved in are talking to each other because if they work in isolation, then we will not get the results that we want to get. The results being making sure that the children are taken care of and uh, they're getting love, there's relationship, and we understand what is going on in the lives of the children outside John Wesley. As you know that HIV is like breaking families. If there is somebody sick at home, then we have a team that is called home-based carers that goes to the homes of the children to look after the guardian who is ill. And not only for the children, but in the neighborhood as well, whoever is needing home-based care. From one year, a child begins to trust and mistrust and have hope. But if there is nobody to listen to this child when the child screams, the child will not trust. So for me, if there are people to really give care and love to these kids and give direction, then we will have better equipped adults. A joker had been sleeping along a branch in the middle of the tree. We encourage children to read, especially English, because it is a language that makes the doors of everyone to be open in the world. We're trying to implant as many information as possible about self-respect, about self-love, about self-discipline, about self-caring, and about self-protection. Because if these children are not protecting themselves, Nobody will protect them. On the women's development side, um, it's been a fantastic story. We've started off with one lady just over a year ago, and now we've got 11 ladies. We've just, it looks like we've got funding for five more sewing machines. That means that we can bring in another five women into the project. We've gone from seeing women who had no sort of drive, who you see, you know, who walk around now and are in complete control of their own destinies. A lot of these um, women come from an era of the apartheid where they never got to finish school. And the other situation is that they get abused and raped and everything else that goes with it because they become desperate for money to actually look after themselves. We're lucky, you know, somebody like me is lucky you go and have a good education. You can choose where and what career you want to go into. These women don't, they've never had that choice. at the John Wesley Center means so much to you. What is so important about it? It's the expression of the church's love for community. And if we say who we are, and I get quite emotional about this, if we say we're the body and we love one another and, and it's a commandment, so if we love the Lord, we would then want to love one another as we would love ourselves. That's the motivation. It's love for the community and for people that probably have far less than what I've been blessed with and to motivate other people who are probably in the same situation. What can these children who live in poverty and sickness and deprivation, what can they be? They can be 
anything that God has called them to be. They've just got to hear it. We've got to speak it. And then they've just got to be it.